Hello and welcome to the strategic planning module of EMC 420. Why do we plan? Planning helps us to set direction and priorities. Sometimes while in the midst of day-to-day -day business, we start solving problems of the day. If all we solve are today's problems, all we are going to fix are today's problems. Strategic planning allows us to keep our vision up on the things that we want to move working forward and keep our agency moving forward. Strategic planning has some very basic goals. The first is a set of direction and priorities. This includes prioritization. Maybe there are 10 things we want to accomplish this year, uh, but don't, we only have time and the resources to complete five of them. So part of this planning process would include figuring out which of those five are the most important for us to get completed. The second is to get everybody on the same page. If we as leaders uh, get everyone in our organization moving in the same direction, the likelihood for us to be able to complete those goals increases greatly. Lastly, it helps in decision making. As we start to struggle on what to do, sometimes with making decisions or if we have a whole lot of inputs, uh, it, it gets difficult for us to decide what it is that we need to do or what we need to work on. A strategic plan can help us make those decisions because as things fall in line with what we want to do, uh, we can uh, finish the, that, that document will actually help us make those decisions. So what is strategic planning? Strategic planning is a long-term planning uh, that is a deep dive into your agency. This allows you to figure out what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong, uh, what you should prioritize, what you should focus on, and really lay out a long-term uh, set of goals and objectives for you uh, to continue to, to uh, move the agency forward. So one of the first things you have to do uh, when developing a strategic plan, and your agency probably has an actual mission statement. However, um, a lot of times, um, a lot of folks gloss over the mission statement or don't put a lot of weight or thought into an actual mission statement. However, a mission statement uh, is very, very key in driving everything that you do at your organization. So let's dig into that. Mission statements, they are a statement of purpose. Uh, so the big question is, is like, why do you do this? Um, and a true mission statement will allow you to, at the, at the root of every decision, if you're able to apply your mission statement to that decision, it will guide you in the way that you uh, are moving. So on here, we, we talk about it serves as a guide for all of the company's decision making. It should help your workers and your employees and your staff know what your organization should be focused on and when the things that are important to that agency. And it also helps us to define our primary purpose for business. Um, you can see the cartoon here. It's like, why are we doing this? So what does that mean? So let's look at a few mission statements. So here's a mission statement. Our mission, which I, I left the company out uh, on purpose, is to organize the world's information and to make it universally accessible and useful. Who do you think that is? You probably guessed Google. Good job. Uh, here's another one. To be the Earth's most customer-centric company where people can find and discover anything they want to buy online. If you use them frequently, you'll know that, that that leads to Amazon. So, let's look at another one. To create a shopping experience that pleases our customers, a workplace that creates opportunities and a great working environment for all our associates, and a business that achieves financial success. Who do you think that is? Hmm, Albertsons. Does that really tie in with what they're doing? It does in some ways, but it doesn't necessarily clearly define the way that the Google's and the Amazon's mission statements did. How about to make every brand more inspiring and the world more intelligent? Do we think that that's a printer label? It could be. So here's one. Let's, let's dig into this a little bit. Our mission is to operate the best specialty retail business in America, regardless of the product we sell. Can you figure out the problems with this mission statement? Are they a specialty agent, uh, uh, company or not? So they're here in their mission statement, they're a specialty retail business, regardless of the product they sell. Hmm. Um, what is their product? Uh, and lastly, are you inspired? Like, does this make you think that when you come to work, that this is the thing that you want to do or you're really excited about? Uh, this is Barnes & Noble, a bookseller. Good mission statements should answer three questions. Uh, it should answer who you are, what is it that you do, how you do it, and the three of those together should help to, to define for whom do you do that. And also, some people will say your why. So, how do you create a mission statement? So, one of the things that we will do is we'll get a group of our staff together, and we start to answer these questions. Who are we? What are we? 
Why do we do what we do? How do we do it? And for whom? And sometimes breaking into small groups and letting those groups work on uh, really defining that, starting out with a really big picture of the thing uh, that your agency does and starts to honing it down, um, starts to get uh, get those answers. And it's going to be a lot of honing and, and, and revising uh, of, this, uh, of these buckets. Um, when you finally get it all together, you start to really get down into the mix of uh, parsing out words and figuring out, like, does this truly mean what we want at our agency? So here's an example. Uh, this is for an agency that I used to work at. Um, and you can talk, you can see on here where some of the work went. Now, obviously, I'm not putting all the work in here, and this took about a month or so to do. But we really divide, dove into the who, the what, the why, the how, and the for whom for our agency. And you can see on here, uh, I put one version of, the, of, a, of a draft of how that started to, to really combine the things that were important to us. Um, and then we get down to the final version of this is the thing that we as an agency felt. This is the reason that we're here. This is who we are providing our care for. This is the thing that we are uh, that is the true uh, mission of the agency day in and day out, regardless of what's happening. So let's move on to core values. What are core values? Values are the things that uh, drive your agency. They're, they're, they're literally the thing that you believe in every day. Uh, these are how you hire, how you fire, um, how you change behavior, how you uh, uh, evaluate someone on a performance uh, standard. Uh, they're truly the heart of your culture. Um, when, you, when you ingrain values in your organization, you can, um, you can move policies forward, you can move process forward, you can move change forward, because instead of actually um, arguing with the person or the policy, you start to bring the value into that. For example, uh, let's pretend that safety is a thing. So instead of asking a fellow employee, um, hey man, why did you not wear your seatbelt? Uh, the, the conversation could change from your supervisor to your employee of saying, hey, is not wearing your seatbelt a safe thing to do? Because what you're doing is actually applying the value. And then it, it in turn then helps to, to drive the behavior of that person. So a core values exercise that you can do at your agency is actually very, very easy. Here's a list of words. This is a randomly generated set of words that are all sort of adjectives of how an agency would work. And one, one exercise that we do um, that would help us uh, to develop values are to take these words, bring all your staff in or over a series of a couple staff meetings, and ask them to pick out the 10 words that uh, they feel uh, reflects that of the agency. And... Uh, what they think the agency uh, truly stands for. Uh, you'll that ex that part of the exercise is really really easy. So then what you do is, is you say, out of those ten words, I want you to pick the five that are the most important in your agency, or the things that you feel are the most um, uh, representative of our agency. They'll do that as well. Drop it down to two or three, and say, now I want you to put a star beside your top two or your top three. Then take all of that, add it up across your agency, and you'll start to get some, some commonalities. So maybe quality or safety or courtesy or whatever might be a word that pops up a lot in your, um, in your results. Uh, from there, you can take that data to your strategic, strategic planning committee and then start to say, hey, quality is coming up a lot. Maybe quality is one of our core values. Now, maybe quality is not the word that you end up using at the end of the day. Maybe it's clinical excellence or some other um, quality care or some other word. But you as your agency will start to actually see what is important to your staff, what is important to your people, and start to actually develop the value uh, that uh, is important to your agency. So as we're talking about this, let's be careful of two things. That there are two types of values. There are authentic values and there are aspirational values. So authentic is the thing that you currently are doing right now. So maybe quality care is one of them. Maybe professionalism is one of them. Um, and then aspirational values are the ones that you want to get to. Maybe you want to be uh, you know, excellent in quality care. You want to be excellent in professionalism. What I will caution you is that as you develop these things and as you work on these things, know that 
you can't have all aspirational values. And sometimes when, when agencies develop values, everything they put down is aspirational. It's not anything they currently do. Values can change over time and they can mold and evolve. However, if you're developing this from the beginning, make sure that you have a decent mix of not only just aspirational, but also some of the authentic values that are uh, true to your agency. So let's dig into value statements. Once we actually get the values done, we need to, to look at value statements. And value statements basically help to define uh, the value a little bit more to where we all are clear on what that value actually means. So as an example, service excellence was a value that uh, used in an agency that I was previously at. And what that service excellence, now, if we all sat in a room together, we all might come up with different uh, definitions for what that meant. But for us, we said, we provide innovative, efficient, and effective healthcare services. Service excellence is taking the time and effort to exceed expectations. So uh, when we were training new staff and we were working on um, uh, teaching things and, and uh, performance evaluations, we all were able to point to what service excellence meant to us. Uh, and that, that helps to further define that and helps to move your values forward. So a thing that can happen is, as you incorporate your values in your agency, you can start to see how these things move into uh, using them in, when, the, when the media talks to you and when uh, you, you have uh, uh, newsletters and all that type of thing. Uh, values can really um, help drive that conversation. Let's move on to vision. A vision statement is something that uh, is a clear statement on where your agency is going uh, or where your project or, or whatever it is that you're working on. Your vision statement should be inspirational. It should be clear. It should be memorable. It should be concise. And basically, uh, it, it shouldn't be necessarily long. Sometimes you'll see vision statements at agencies that um, truly uh, are complicated and very difficult. And if you can't get everybody on the same page and looking at the actual, um, where the, the singular, singular vision of the agency is, it's going to be difficult for you to get anything done. So with that, let's look at some vision statements. And, and basically the, the easiest way to do this, there's not necessarily a, an easy way uh, or a clear or a set way. Basically is you need to sit down and think about in 10 to 15 years, where you want your agency to be and what's the thing that drives you? Uh, so it, it leans a little bit from mission, but this is more of a vision. So let's look at a couple examples and maybe it'll be more clear. So San Diego Zoo, to become a world leader at connecting people to wildlife and conservation. That's clear. You know what they're, where they're going and what they're wanting to do uh, and what, the, what is a, a key component of the San Diego Zoo. Let's look at the Cleveland Clinic. Striving to be the world's leader in patient experience, clinical outcomes, research, and education. So very clearly, anyone that comes to work at that agency or anyone that gets care at that agency or, or anyone that is involved with that agency knows that they're striving to be the world leader in the patient experience, the clinical outcomes of their uh, patient experience, research, and education. Here's a very, a very simple one, the Alzheimer's Association. Our vision is a world without Alzheimer's. So very clear. That is their goal every day. That is the thing that they're striving to do. If they can figure out a way to get rid of Alzheimer's, that uh, they have they have su succeeded in their mission. So, how are some ways that you can check the pulse of your agency? Uh, when I say check the pulse of your agency, these are the things that, as a leader, you should dig into, and and work to make sure that any strategic planning process is a thing that involves you looking in the mirror, seeing what you do right, what you do wrong, what you could do better. So a SWOT analysis is one of those things. A SWOT analysis is, uh, is, is short for the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities, and threats. How we look at these is that strengths and weaknesses are things that we do internally that are, that are strengths to us and are weaknesses to us. Um, the opportunities and threats are things that are external. So weather, competition, uh, maybe your employees are revolting about something. Maybe there's a new competitor coming into town. Maybe a new heart monitor is threatening to, to change the way that you're doing things. So a way to do this is, uh, is very simple. Get a group of your staff together, uh, bring them together, give them a, a stack of post-its notes, and let them all ha and, and around the room put a single piece of uh, flip paper. And on there, get them to write 
every strength. And it can all just be single things like staffing or education or patient care or whatever that might be. And throw it up on the board under its uh, assigned things, the, the S, the W, the O, or the T. And what ends up, what you'll find happen is, one, all of your staff participate in the process, which is really important. The second thing is that you'll start to see themes. So as maybe quality care comes to ground or maybe staffing comes around or whatever, you can start to develop themes that then you can develop uh, goals and objectives from. So here's an example where we were able to take a whole bunch of, of Post-it notes and we are able to, to um, take all the input, good, bad, or indifferent. And you can see on here how some of the uh, post-it notes got into the billing, the financial, the facility, the personnel, whatever it might be, uh, of how um, the staff feedback was for in this in this case of what was important to them. Some things with SWOT analysis and when you get staff involved in things is that you will have naysayers and you'll have negative folks. That is okay. The thing about it is, is that regardless of your agency or what's going on, you need to take people's feedback and make sure it's all taken and recorded. The other thing is that as you do projects like this, make sure that you're reporting back to your staff of the actions that you've done and the things that you are incorporating and the things that you're changing because of the input that they're, they're putting in. Uh, we do point out that sometimes there is false information. Sometimes everybody thinks you're doing something really well. Like, hey, we do, we, we drive ambulances really well and have a really low uh, accident rate. Check with your fleet manager and see if that's truly the case. Uh, maybe sometimes you think that you're really, really great drivers, but uh, actually you hit stuff all the time. Be careful of that. Another part of strategic planning is situational awareness. There are many, many tools to do this, and I will quickly go over one, uh, but there's a ton of these. Um, this thing is called the pest, uh, I'm going to go over a pest analysis. So a pest analysis is short for political, economic, social, and technological. However, that has been expanded in the year, in the past few years. And now there's PESTOL, PESTOLED, a whole bunch of other acronyms. A lot of times we just use the word pest just to understand that that's the thing we're looking at. So in, that, in a pest analysis, what we look for is the political, economic, social, technological, legal, intercultural, environmental, demographic things that are affecting your agency. Now, I'm not going to go into each one of these, but for example, political factors are basically what, uh, to what degree the government intervenes. Specifically, political factors uh, on tax policy, labor law, environmental law, um, trade restrictions, tariffs, political stability, uh, political factors on goods and services, uh, what the government uh, does or does not allow in your agency. Um, they also have a high impact on health, education, infrastructure of uh, not just our agency, but any agency. Um, another one, let's go with environmental. We'll drop down the page here. Environmental factors include ecological and environmental aspects such as weather, climate, climate change. Uh, this could affect tourism, farming, people that go to your school, people that go, live in your area. Maybe there's more people moving in or more people moving out. Um, all of these things um, help to determine uh, how you should plan. So uh, here's a, some quick uh, words, but technological. So as things are um, maybe new software or new computers help you to, to do a job easier, maybe the implementation of that new software or technology actually makes your job harder because you're going to have a couple years of implementation. So how does this actually impact us? So one of the reasons that we do a pest analysis is, and you can look these things up online, but one of the reasons that we do these are as we start to develop our plan for the next three to five years, how are these things going to impact us? I'm going to jump back up to the political one for a minute. As administrations, whether it be pre presidential or gubernatorial, or even sometimes your Senate or, or legislative races, it can impact reimbursement rates on EMS agencies. It can impact um, who might run an EMS office or not, or what agencies or representatives might be like on a, on a state EMS board. All those things can impact your agency. And the thing is, is that you don't necessarily need to change them, but that in your planning process, you know they exist and how you would uh, adapt your planning process if one of those things actually happened. A couple examples. Um, you guys might have uh, realized that you might have heard things like um, NFPA 1917 or the uh, Triple K standards or GSA standards for ambulances. Now, ambulances all have to meet certain requirements. Those are things that the government impl um, implemented 
and we all now have to comply with, and now that increases the price of an ambulance. It's the right thing to do. It's the right thing for our safety of our staff and our patients. Um, however, you can see that how a decision at the government level can impact your agency. Another thing is NEMSIS. If you're not familiar with NEMSIS, it's the National EMS Information System. They are the ones that drive all these fancy software systems that all of us use for our patient care. Um, certain fields are required and certain fields are mandatory. Part of that is the fact that the National EMS Data System requires EMS agencies to report certain data on every call. And when those go in, they collect it. And that's how when you see some of these national studies or you see um, news reports on X percent of something was happening, um, a lot of that comes from this national data because every EMS agency is required to report this data the same way nationally. Then you're able to compare agencies in Montana with agencies in Kentucky and agencies in New York and agencies in Florida to really get a feel for what is happening in the EMS world. Another tool that you can use uh, in your strategic planning process is a focus group. A focus group is a small uh, group of folks, um, usually a cross section of your community or a, a, some type of an event or whatever you're working on, that they're asked about their perceptions, opinions, beliefs toward an idea, an advertisement, a packaging, a whatever. So for example, uh, usually what I would do is bring these folks in, give them some coffee, some snacks, and say, hey, how do you believe that this EMS agency is providing care to their community? Write down their thoughts, opinions, ideas, what their beliefs, uh, what their opinions are. Uh, how these are powerful are usually it's facilitated in some way, but you're getting raw feedback for what uh, someone that's not familiar with your agency or not familiar with what you're doing actually feels that you or your, and your agency are doing. So if you maybe implemented a new response plan that might have uh, lowered or, uh, or increased response times to a certain area of your response uh, area, um, you could have someone in that focus group that doesn't know that you changed something, but maybe knows it takes longer to get an ambulance or says, wow, I called an ambulance the other day and it came really quickly. That's awesome. That's all feedback that you as a manager can use uh, when you start to develop your plans. Developing goals. Um, once you start to, once you finish up the process of understanding the sort of the, the universe that your agency lives in and the plane that, that it lives, um, you have to start to developing goals. Uh, goals should be smart, and we'll cover that in just a second, and they should stretch you. They shouldn't be, I'm going to clock in and clock out today, or I'm going to wash my truck today. But they should be something like, we're going to increase our staffing by 2% in the next two months. Now, that might seem like a small amount, but if you have 500 staff and you're going to increase it by 2%, that's a pretty big number. So what are SMART goals? SMART goals are, uh, as it's an acronym, and what that means is goals have to be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. So it has to be specific enough that you can define it. It has to be measurable. So as I used that example a minute ago, the 2%. Is it achievable? So sometimes you can create a really specific goal. We're going to build a colony of EMS uh, response agencies on Mars. That is specific. That is measurable. Um, however, that's not necessarily achievable. Um, it's definitely not realistic. Uh, and the time would be really far out. Uh, so what these do is these help us to define what should be in our actual goal. Let's dig into one. So here's an example. This one was under the strategy of workforce development, and the SMART goal was implement four or more workforce components that foster education, professional, and skill development by 2018. So this agency said in the whatever the time frame was, 2015 to 2018, that they're going to implement four or more workforce components that foster education, professional, and skill development. Now, they probably have a list of what workforce components are, but what that does is that gives them something that, did they get four of them? Did it get them by 2018? And did they meet the classification in their mind of education, professionalism, and skill development? That is how you use a SMART goal to uh, move your plan forward and to, uh, to, to set goals for yourself. So as you work on strategic planning, one of the things that's really, really important is uh, making sure that your agency is ready for this process. If they don't want it, uh, you're wasting your time. We have to get, we have to get buy-in from all levels, from your board or your governing body all the way down to your staff. Watch out for naysayers. Include them, but watch for them to really drag your process down, especially if you're trying to implement new and exciting things. 
Stay on task. This is a big process. It'll be really fun, just like any change initiative, really fun the first few weeks. After that, um, it, uh, it can get off the rails really quickly. Something that happens a lot, and especially in EMS agencies, is that we are really, really bad at ready, fire, aim. So we start to identify a problem, and we want to fix it. But we haven't actually sat down and figured out the best way to fix it or, or brought in the, the right, uh, uh, putting the right thing in our crosshairs to get there. So we, we end up firing before we get the, the aim correct. So make sure we don't do a ready, fire, aim. Look at realistic timelines. Um, strategic planning is not something you do in an afternoon. Strategic planning is not something that is going to happen this week. Usually strategic planning takes multiple weeks or months to really get through. And remember that looking in the mirror, looking at your agency, does a lot for help you to build for the future. Uh, watch out for rabbit holes. Sometimes you can dig into a hole and start to go down a place that doesn't affect the long-term growth of your agency nor help it at all. One thing that as you implement a process like this is give yourself metrics. We're going to do X, Y, Z by this time. And when that happens, celebrate, get excited about it. Uh, there's a lot of times in our, in our work day that we forget that we need to celebrate when we do have wins or do have successes. Lastly, watch for burnout. Um, as these things move on, um, digging into this is a very heavy thing uh, mentally. Make sure that you are doing your part to dig in and, and to watch for burnout, burnout for your staff. That concludes the strategic planning lecture. There's more in your book. Um, good luck implementing a strategic planning process in your agency, and uh, please email us if you have any questions. Thanks, and have a great day.